All right, it's in place. Okay. Uh, I guess we're calling the meeting order at 7.32. Okay. Um, and then three more people entered the waiting room. Hold on. Kim Diamond, Renee, Steve Corellis. All right. Terrific. Okay, well, maybe we'll recall the meeting to order. <laughs> um, approving On the meeting order. Go ahead, Rich. You, you go ahead. Approving minutes for March 1 and February 15. Is anyone those minutes? Um, well, uh, March March one I haven't submitted yet. I will submit in the in about a day. Right. So February fifteen. Has anyone reviewed February fifteen? If not, we'll just hold on to it for the next meeting. I'm not hearing anyone speaking up. I've reviewed them. Um, they looked fine to me. But if no one else has, I guess we have to wait till the next yeah, meeting. Another person. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit uh, challenged tonight because I'm not working from my computer. I'm working from my cell phone because my co computer uh, stopped functioning this morning. Uh, hearing on agenda rooms only, three minutes for residents. We have a couple of residents. Anybody want to speak? Oh, uh, hold up, Mufleta. Who's uh, going to take minutes tonight? Oh, yes. Who's taking minutes? I can take minutes. Um, okay, great. Thanks for that. Yep. Rich, might be a good idea to introduce Chris. One is a new member. Yes. Hi, Chris. Welcome, Chris. All right, I guess there's nobody from um, the No, yeah, sorry, Rich. I was just kind of waiting if, if after if there's more going to be said again after Chris. I'll be happy to. I was going to say if Tom wanted to, but I got, I'll do mine. I basically mostly a, a few questions about the agenda. Um, actually, first, um, I presume, uh, Richard, that you, your usual good self, had this agenda for this plenty of time, and it's the, the, the township folks who post it were late again. And uh, um, you know if they're going to get any better at doing this to meet the needs? Maybe, maybe when they're done with a pandemic and building a new municipal building. Well, I, went, I can just ask all my questions like we tend to do in three minutes and you can come back. Um, well, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for some background voices to stop. Okay, I'll hang. I'll hang. So, so the agenda, uh, I sent the agenda to everyone last week about uh, either, it was either Wednesday or Thursday, I've forgotten now. Um, and uh, as you said, uh, I could not get back to you, Steve, because I was preoccupied to do with my computer when I pulled your email. I called the yeah. phone and asked whether the agenda had been posted. They claimed it had, but then it hadn't. So I'm uh, guessing that now it is posted. But this, of course, is later than required by law. Um, so that's an issue. Yeah, I, I had, um, it wasn't there last night when I sent you the email. I, you didn't need to get back to me. It was nice for you to get back to getting someone to fix it. Because when I looked um, after lunch today, it, it was there. So that was, I could see it before the meeting. So that was OK. But yeah, they should uh, be consistent. Um, my, my two, my two questions are on agenda item, new old business, you, what is direct install? I'm not sure I know what that subject matter is. And the other question is, uh, for W C F M P core training, what is the acronym for an acronym, unacronized C F M P and maybe I'll know what that is. And then okay. and my last request is if, if it indulged the, the chair, if you could move the um, uh, EV charging agenda item up closer to the top of all business so that I don't have to sit through the whole rest of the meeting. That would, that would we, love, we love having you. 
Um, so hey, anyway, that's it. those are my questions and that's my request. Go ahead. Okay. I need to ask, so let's take the last first. EV charging, is it all right with the commission to move that item to the top of all business? Any objections? No objections from me. Okay. Anybody else? No, nope. so no worries. We'll put that first in all business. Second, direct install is an energy saving program that's connected with um, uh, Sustainable Jersey, uh, generally working with businesses, but in the past. Um, so doing things like uh, making, uh, putting in more efficient uh, lighting into businesses, looking at other energy energy saving uh, actions might mean a, a better insulation, things like that. Installing um, stuff to help, yeah. I, okay, I got it. Yep. Um, the second thing, uh, CFMP is Community Forestry Management Plan. Ah. Our, our town has a Community Forestry Management Plan and we've had it in place for more than 20 years. Uh, it's the uh, purpose is uh, basically to care for the trees and make sure that we're doing the right things with our community forest. Yeah, I'm familiar with a lot of tree stuff. So that's what that, as long as I know what it means, I, I get it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, moving on, uh, unless there's somebody else. If not, then we move on to the plan 75. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But I wanted to ask a question. I'm sorry, I didn't get to my uh, unmute right away. Who's this? Uh, Tom, Tom Forger. Forger. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Tom, I cannot see people at the same time as I look at the agenda. Go ahead. Uh, I was a little slow to get to the uh, uh, unmute button. Right, so okay. I have, a sim I have a simple question. Uh, with regard to these Trex benches, uh, where do they go once you, once you obtain one? Where do you put it? It's been mostly going to Lower uh, Columbia Park. Uh, has, is Kim in the? Kim is on. I don't know if she's on screen right now, though. I know there are some benches in Lower Columbia Park. There's one at Dr. Um, Smith's place. I think there is one, I believe, near Taylor Rental, if I'm I could be wrong, but I could remember that from a previous meeting. And there's one at the ball field at uh, Columbia, to Upper Columbia, right? The high school. Columbia. Yeah, yep, Middle yes, school. yeah, I remember that. Yeah, for Annie, right? Yeah, for Annie. Then, yep, that's right. All right, there was one for Annie, right? Yeah. Okay. One of them is I, one of them is labeled with our name, and then I think most of the others are engraved with, um, you know, the organizations that uh, that sponsor them. Kim, uh, Tom Forager, Tom Forager is asking where the locations of the uh, benches, Trex benches are. We already relayed that Columbia Park and Upper Columbia and uh, 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 Dr. Smith. And I think there's one over at Taylor Rental, if I'm correct. Is there any others? Oh, I think she's connecting to audio. Okay, uh, who pays for the engraving on the bench? The Environmental Commission paid for the engraving the, because the organizations that were collecting the thin film plastics, right, were being recognized that way. So oh, you said the Environmental Commission pays for it? For it? Yes. Okay. But also these organizations that collect collect the plastic also pay. No, they they are getting recognized for collecting thin film plastic. Okay, that's the way we're okay. using them. We're honoring them for collecting thin film plastic. Okay, thank you. That's all I have for now. All right, then if there's nothing else, then let's move on to plans thirty five. 75 in Queens Street. Um, I sent this around to people. Uh, it's incomplete because I did not have access to the maps 
uh, for recharging. Uh, but I think that uh, Lincoln Street is uh, maybe a, a moderate recharge between six and 12 inches uh, a year. Uh, but it's not in a uh, wetlands or a floodway or a riparian zone. And basically, uh, there's an increase in other coverage, right, which exceeds the maximum. So bas basically saying, recommend uh, disconnecting from uh, the streets and uh, putting in a rain garden. Anybody have any comments on 75 Lincoln Street? My one comment, Richard, is that um, the last bullet under recommendations is install pervious pavers. Yes. Um, so I looked at the other, I read the other two letters of recommendation for this month's me this week, this meeting. Um, all similar situations all stay under the maximum allowed. Um, I don't not think it's the same recommendation for those. Sorry, not correct, David, just uh, yeah. okay. there's so one, one that's the maximum. Well, yeah, one is over the max. Um, regardless, though, I don't think we made the same recommendation for pervious pavers for the others. I think in the others, and I'm not recalling for sure, but I think in this case, they were installing more pavers. In the cases of the other, the pavers exist. But I could be wrong about that. If that's the case that they would install pavers, I would agree with you, we should recommend that they install pervious favors. Is there an expectation when we make the recommendation that they, I mean, fully understand what that means? Uh, or is that, you know, it's just listening in enough because isn't it more involved in, than just putting down the right papers? You need to have the right conditions to put those into, to actually make that work? I'm, I'm not sure I'm following you on that. Uh, Angus, you're saying it to 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 specify pervious pavers means something in particular. So it's not that you're simply putting down pavers and expecting that they are pervious. You have to uh, do something with the the subsurface below right. the pavers, and you must avoid uh, filling in the areas between the pavers with material that would not allow the rain to, uh, or storm water to, to drain down in between the paver. And that uh, designation also generally, um, the um, township official, such as the engineer, would have to approve what they are putting in and, so that they would conform to the designation or the specification pervious pavers. Okay, so someone will oversee it, make sure that they, I mean, they have to approve it, make sure that they do that right, so that, you know, it's not just, okay. Exactly right. Okay, no, that's, that was just my concern to-, to, well, to I mean, that, that, that's a fair question because there, there is no process whereby the township engineer oversees the installation. Uh, unless, unless the zoning board uh, specifies that. So we're recommending to the zoning board that they do that. Yeah, typically from a, in a planning board application, the engineer does oversee the final inspection to ensure that it's in conformance with what was agreed to by the respective boards like that. Um, I, I can't speak about the zoning board, but from a planning board point of view, you don't get the equivalent of a CEO uh, unless the engineer actually can execute a document confirming that you've satisfied all the requirements for the application. So Kevin, on that question then, I mean, if they were to uh, to sign off, is there some sort of, you know, test, I guess, that, that confirms that everything was done right? Because I mean, if everything's laid down already, how do they know underneath no. that they did anything? I can't speak to that either. I, I I can speculate that that during the course of these projects, the township will visit the site from time to time. Okay. Um, that is that's typically how it's done. Um, 
but to your point, if something happens on a given day, I can't speak to whether they, I can't speak to that. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, there are inspections that have to be done right? when construction proceeds. So if, uh, if a house is being built, there's an inspection after the plumbing. There's an inspection after the electric. There's an inspection after the, the, ins the insulation is done. Mm. If somebody goes before the zoning board or the planning board and the planning board or zoning board says, you have to do this, then there's an agreement. And that or a resolution on the part of the zoning board or planning board, which specifies Okay, for example, you must install pervious pavers as approved. And then that has to, that means that they have to seek approval from the township engineer. The township engineer will know, let them know how that is going to be inspected. Okay. That's correct. I, I doubt though that the inspection will include inspecting the substrate and then inspecting the finished installation. I just doubt that's going to happen in practice. Well, I would expect it to happen because they have to show that there is a substrate that's installed that's going to allow the um, storm water to penetrate the ground. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't testify to the case, but I, 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 I support Richard's uh, contention there that, I mean, the township is a matter of routine. We'll go to a site on the construction several times to ensure it's being managed appropriately before they sign off. Okay. Uh, and David, I'm, I'm saying in the recommendation that the previous barriers are to be approved by the township engineer. So uh, the ultimate- uh, they're, not gonna, yeah, they're not gonna give you a permit unless the job is done correctly to the satisfaction of the township. So, so I go back to my consistency question. Oh, the, the, the basis of my question was consistency. Um, I don't think we've been asking for that for previous applications that have been under the limits, or have we? Well, if there are not previous pavers that, and they're saying they're going to install pavers, then in that case, um, we would expect them, uh, you know, to that as we recommend to the board that they would install pavers. If pavers already exist, uh, then that would mean if, if we recommended that they install pervious pavers, that would mean they'd have to uninstall. They'd have to pick up the pavers uh, that they. No, could. no, that's not my suggestion at all. Um, I'm just looking to make sure that we make our recommendations um, consistently across the board. So what I'm trying to say is the consistency here is if people are saying they're installing pavers, then I, as far as I can remember, in recommend that they install pervious pavers. There's where I'm coming from. To be consistent, any time that pavers are going to be installed, I, I write the part of the recommendation that they installed pervious pavers. So basically like in the other previous ones, like if they're installing a deck, there's no, it's it's about their total um, impervious coverage. If everything's already paved, there's no recommendation there to change anything. Basically. The recommendation is then to install green infrastructure. That is they'd have to, they would uh, you know, put in a rain garden and, and have uh, the impervious surface drain into the rain garden or a swale alongside the pavers. Right. Okay, I'm okay with that. I just, um, I, I hadn't picked up on that previously, but I'm okay with the recommendation. All right, so that uh, 75 Lincoln Street, anybody else a second? Uh, I second the recommendation. Okay, any objections? No. Okay, if no, then we have 75 Lincoln approved. Moving on, and I'm sorry if I'm going out of order, but I just pulled up 94 Briarwood Drive East. Yep, that's the next one. So this is a case where the total proposed structures are slightly over. The total existing lot is under. 
the total proposed lot coverage is under, just slightly under. And so we're just uh, recommending that you, that the, um, the applicant retain stormwater runoff on the property with green infrastructure, nothing further. This is again, uh, an installation of a, an above ground pool, right? Uh, I have to verify that the groundwater recharge, uh, what that is, uh, but I was able to check that it's not in the flood zone or a riparian zone or a wetland. And uh, I have to verify that what the slope is, that it's 3% or, or less. Any comments? No. So, there's, there, so back to my consistency point, they're installing a pool, right? Yes. So should we not be recommending that the surround be pervious pavers? I did not see anything about the surround, but I'm, I'd have to look back to see if this is an above ground pool. So ah. they may not have a surround on the pool. It may just be soil. I did not see anything in the drawing about pavers around the pool. I missed Maybe the above I'm... ground bit. Yep. Yeah. Any other comments uh, or on 94 prior wood? And if not, do I hear a recommendation to approve? Yeah. Recommendation to approve uh, Richard's um, last recommendation as drafted. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Any, any objections? If not, then let's move on to uh, what is it? Magnum Court. 18 Magnum Court. Um, another above ground pool, I guess. Uh, here we have a situation. Um, this is uh, near where John lives, uh, off of Park Avenue, not that close to John, maybe. But you see that the total existing lot is 45.6%. Allowed for the zone is 25%. They were actually reducing the total existing to 43.3%. Um, and I have to verify groundwater recharge and the slope, but it's not in a flood zone, riparian zone, or wetland. Uh, it is near one, but it's not in one. Um, because they're reducing, uh, you know, I would have normally recommended uh, with impervious coverage of you know, 43% versus 25% allowed that we reject the application, but it exists with 45.6% and uh, they're reducing it to 43.3%. So I um, made the recommendation that we strongly recommend retaining stormwater runoff on the property and any plan for controlling stormwater runoff subject to approval by the township engineer. So your letter um, of recommendation says um, install pool. They're actually removing an existing pool and replacing it or re reconstructing it. Good so, um, I, I, am, I am not clear about that, David. Uh, you, if it's easier for you, easy for you to look at the files I sent, that would help. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Um, okay. In, in the denial of application from the township, it says the property owner is propo proposing to remove the existing pool surround and side. I've got the right one. 18 Magnum Lock 601. Yeah, remove the existing pool surround and sidewalk and reconstruct both. The okay. pool surround will increase in size from this to that. Um, but the pool is pre-existing, so they're not they're not in, they're not installing a pool. They're just changing the surround. And are they building? I thought they were building some sort of retaining wall too. 
it seems the property is on a slope and so the it seems like the rear of the property slopes down and so the deck that comes off the first floor is, is sort of pool level right there's mention of a retaining wall somewhere. I didn't look at the plans in that much detail. So if they are installing a surround, that is, if they're installing pavers or macad not macadam, concrete, uh, so we could recommend here to use... It, it looks as if this is a, an above ground pool, but the surround is going to be raised. So it's like a a deck around the pool, I think. Ah, so the because of, because of the um, elevation change, the ele elevation difference as, as the property slope slopes back. Right. If it's a deck, so then that means uh, it's not counted towards impervious surface, probably. Right. Yeah, I, I've got no problem with this one. I think, I mean, it's they're at an egregiously high level of impervious coverage. They're reducing it slightly. That's okay. That's something. Right. Um, so I'm okay with the applicant with the recommendation as written. Right. Um, with, with the exception that we should note that they are um, modifying the pool surround as opposed to installing a pool. So does that mean we should modify the recommendation, uh, um, the document to, to reflect the change? Yeah, I think the let I think our letter says um, says above ground pool. Says installing a pool. Applicant is installing a pool. Okay, got it. Um, so replacing this the pool surround. So the first bullet should be changed to reflect that the applicant is um, rebuilding the pool surround. Got it. And then there's just the gaps around recharge that you need to recharge and slope, as you noted. Okay, with that change. Good for me. Okay. Any, do we hear a, a motion to approve? Motion to approve. And second? Second. second. Okay. No objections, then we consider it approved. I would like to know though how they ever got to 47% impervious <laughs> coverage. That is ridiculous. <laughs> so I know, I know it was in 1991, but still. In 1991, they may not have been thinking about that. They clearly weren't. Um, new business, food waste at the schools. And here I turn to, if we have our representative from the schools, uh, can you give us uh, a report on that? Yes, Rich. Um, just to bring everyone up to speed, you sent me an email, I believe, last Thursday mentioning that uh, sustainable Jersey meeting today, the uh, food waste was brought up. Uh, apparently, I think it's 2019, school food waste guidelines were distributed by the state. Uh, it includes uh, designating a faculty leader, creating a club, group, committee, measuring food waste, <clears throat> excuse me, collecting food waste. And you also mentioned uh, it could qualify for sustainable Jersey points if the program exists. I checked with uh, business administrator, Donna Felizola, mm -hmm. and she had not been aware of it. However, she will take a, a close look at this, um, but please keep in mind that lunch uh, is not being served currently. So right. this whole year, it's, you know, it's kind of been a little bit moot, but she will definitely take a look at that. We hope the schools get back to normal, more normal operation but I wasn't sure if the schools were all aware of this program so apparently not yes that's my understanding apparently not 
And just sort of to your other point, um, Superintendent Varley has mentioned that she would like to get schools all the way up and running sometime in April, but did caution that that was a bit aspirational. Yes, yeah, I think we're all aspiring. Um, so then we, um, thanks, thanks for the report. Um, and now we're going to, now I've lost my agenda. Scout projects. No, we scout, scout projects. We wanted, we agreed to move up EV charging. Oh, that's a exist. Isn't that an existing, uh, old business? So I guess that would that be the first one? Well, that's existing old business. And we, I asked if the commission would agree to move that to the top of old business. So do we, is Kim there to report? Yeah. I I'm here. Um, so I touched base with Alvaro, and Alvaro indicated that he submitted the ordinance to Liza to have it farmed out to those who need to comment on it. Um, Alvaro, have you heard anything further back from Liza at this point or anyone else? No, I just know she has it with the attorney at this point, but uh, we did discuss it as well with Angie and uh, Jean Kingsley today. Keen is asking that uh, we have a presentation from the Environmental Commission at our next meeting, not this coming, not tomorrow's, the next meeting on the on the EV charging ordinance from the Environmental Commission. And I wanted to ask if you would be willing to do that. Sure. Meeting, can you uh, can you remind us of the date so we can capture that? Yeah, that's April uh, April six. April six. How, how long do you want the presentation to be, Alvaro? Just five, 10 minutes, just a brief overview. Okay. And then the plan would be to introduce at the following meeting, which would be April 20th. So just a, a talk through or a PowerPoint, what, what is your preference? Doesn't have to be formal. I think a brief discussion, background, purpose, goals, that sort of thing. Okay. I ask that I'll make sure that Keenan is there as well. For any technical questions. Okay. okay. Thanks so much. What, what time is the meeting? Do you, is it seven thirty on the on that Tuesday? Uh, no, it's always at seven o'clock. But you can probably count on maybe a ten or fifteen minute delay while we go through the usual introductions, preliminary. Okay. Would it be after the council reports? Uh, no, it'll, it'll be. I think it's before. It'll be before, right? Yes. All right. Are we ready to move on to scout projects? Scout projects. Uh, I can report that the scout who wants to do a rain garden in town uh, chose. Uh, Mountain Park uh, as his site. He has uh, talked with the principal. Uh, the principal's in agreement. Uh, I think he needs to also talk with the head custodian uh, to get his uh, agreement, and he will probably need some help from the head custodian. Uh, I sent him uh, links to a complete rain garden manual and had a conversation with him a couple of days ago. He's excited about proceeding with the project, but uh, he's um, projecting that he wouldn't start it, you know, until the fall. And as some of you are aware, uh, a scout has to go through considerable paperwork to develop the project and go through approvals, various stages of approvals. Um, and uh, then he can actually uh, proceed with the project. Uh, so that's what I've got on uh, the Eagle Scout project. Anybody else, uh, Chris or David? Uh, I've got no news. Okay. Community garden. Um, there's a meeting tomorrow 
uh, for all the members going over stuff, mostly uh, focused around the honeybees and a presentation from uh, the Girl Scout doing that. Uh, the fence, the little beehive fence enclosure is fully built now, just an FYI as well. So they're going to be getting up and running with the bees soon, hopefully. Oh, uh, yeah. Flowers are starting to bloom. Crocus are out. Daffodils will be up in a little while. Other flowers will start coming out. Uh, anything else, Community Garden? If not, on to Stormwater Ordinance. Uh, Stormwater Ordinance says, uh, I reported previously, we are now uh, past the date that it is due. Uh, I haven't heard anything from Lumiset on this. Um, uh, Alvaro, do you have any things to report on this? I don't know what's happening. I, um, I met just uh, talked to Liza about a couple of weeks ago, maybe longer than that. Um, I guess her sense is that uh, thanks to COVID, we'll be likely to get a break on being late uh, with uh, being ready for it. But she wasn't, she didn't share much more than that. I, uh, I have an update from Liza today. Um, she's, we're, we're meeting with Sal for, uh, Tom Safaro. Uh, I think she's meeting with him tomorrow, and I might catch up with them Thursday. So um, I think we're, I think we we're going to finish this up here shortly. Well, here's, here's the whole point as far as Andrek uh, and I think I sent, I forwarded that on to people. As far as uh, the state is concerned, uh, uh, law, um, new applications have to conform with the uh, state's uh, stormwater regulations, which require as a first option, green infrastructure. Yep. So it doesn't matter what ordinance is in place in the town, right now, green infrastructure is the first uh, priority in any uh, type of stormwater uh, like control. It's, uh, it's a minor change, really. It's just that green infrastructure goes before anything else. So green infrastructure, unless there's a safety issue or an environmental issue, essentially. Well, it's not a minor change, John, because uh, as uh, we noted, as we saw, uh, every time we brought up green infrastructure with any of the major projects coming along, whether it was at um, uh, Church of the Little Flower or any of the other major projects, the um, applicants are uh, basically said, ah, we don't think we're doing that. And they uh, were able to get the approval from the planning board uh, to not do that. So that's a major change. Moving on to sustainable Jersey actions, township assets action. Kevin. Yes, so uh, not much to report on. I spoke to Barbara uh, Russo downtown, and I also talked to Tony Panavato, who runs uh, not only the fire department, but also the uh, Office of Emergency Management. Um, and I had mentioned that we were looking to, you know, I gave them the highlight of the program and, and the, the information that we need. I figured these, OEM actually knows all the different groups involved uh, in the township in terms of knowing what our emergency assets are. And Barbara knows all the different community uh, formal and informal groups and contact points. So I'm, I'm collecting a list from both of these folks. I'm starting to sort of formulate a framework for this. That's terrific. You have a target date? Um, I know it's due in June. And uh, hopefully I'll have something before the end of March where I can circulate to the group just to see what I've done so far so we can start to critique and criticize and give me guidance as to how to develop it further. OK, thanks. Yeah. Uh, upgrade retrofit lighting pollution. I think this was a, a Kim project. Kim, do you have anything on this? Um, I mean, we, we haven't actually had anything on this for a, a while. We might as well remove it from the agenda unless there's some um, interest in moving forward with this on a township level at, at this point in time.
thrown it okay. out there to the crowd. Is, is there interest in doing anything further with this based on what we know about um, the, uh, the lighting at this point? Or should we just take it off the agenda? I would be curious to know whether the town and I think I asked this question before, but I'm, I'm not remembering what the answer was, whether the township is responsible for street lights, that is the street lights on the township streets and what those lights are, are they LED lamps or not? So- I'll question, throw to you, no. No. Um, no, no. I think at this point, they're largely not LED. I, I would think they're not. But if they are not township street lights, then it becomes a um, a, it could be a county or it could be that the uh, electric utility company is the one who's responsible for them. I don't know. Uh, is there a way to find that out? Uh, can we check with uh, engineering or with DPW? It's on my or the lights on my street or JCPNL. If there's a problem with the lights, we call JCPNL. We call JCPNL, right? Yep. Yeah. So if if it's JCPNL, then we've got a more uh, lengthy yeah. way to move in bureaucracy. So I I'm thinking if that's the case, maybe we uh, will leave this off for the time being. So let's just should we figure out what the question is. I mean, if 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 there's an active program to upgrade or to refit streetlights from being the old technology, whatever that was, to LED, then mm -hmm. presumably there's an opportunity to influence to some extent what they install, right? And the question was about the color of the light. Both, um, right? Both, both the savings and. Uh, electricity because you're using LEDs and the, you, the color of the light because of the effect it has on uh, of insects and people. Yeah, so I, I think it's a given that we're gonna be moving towards LED at some point because of the cost saving. Um, so the question is, is there an ongoing project and do we need to try to influence that in terms of the, the color of the lights that they install? Yeah. It also affects the question, um, I mean, given, you know, if JCPNL is managing the lights, you know, who pays for it? Uh, the, electric the electricity use, you know, is it the township? Are we just being billed back by JCPNL? Is the county being billed back if it's on the county roads? Do we know what, what? Uh... Right, and I don't have an answer. I, I, Alvaro, would it be possible somehow to arrange for JCPNL to give us an update or a presentation on the state of their technology at this time and what their plan is for our streetlights, if they in fact own a certain quantity of our streetlights, just so that we're not kind of guessing, so that we actually know what's going on? You have a liaison. Uh, with her from JCP and I can certainly reach out to her and ask, did you want her to join this meeting? Yeah, I guess uh, that would be great. Or, yeah. or a separate meeting. If, 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 if it's more convenient for her, I, I guess, let's see what her time is. Okay, I'll reach out to her. And we can also su supply in advance of the meeting uh, information on the Sustainable Jersey Action. Can I just ask a question out of curiosity? Is Springfield Avenue lights different in terms of they're supposed to be maintained or paid for by the business owners as opposed to the residential lights possibly being different? Hey, good question. I don't have an answer. The if you're talking about the uh, the lights, which are sort of the gas, the more ornate gas looking lights. Uh, the green ones, yeah. Right. So those are, I may be wrong here, uh, but um, those are technically township lights. Uh -huh. uh, but in an effort to 
um, create a consistent aesthetic downtown. Uh, the township requests uh, any commercial applicant that's looking to make a material change to their property, if it borders Springfield Avenue, to include in its application uh, brick paper sidewalk and uh, that standard look and feel of the light. So uh, many times the applicant will actually pay for and install that light uh, to the benefit of the township. Okay. But whether that applicant also pays for the electrical usage, do you know? No, I think the township pays for, I mean, I, I, I do not think that's billed privately. I think that's a township liability. Okay. And the one question we weren't sure about from before was, do the county roads, does the, the cost of street lighting the county roads actually go to the county rather than the township? It's an interesting question because like Springfield Avenue is a county road technically. Yeah. yeah. But but the township is setting a standard in terms of what, what the light should look like. So I, I right. Gene Kingsley uh, would probably be better positioned to respond to that. Given the fact that she in the beautification committee has set that standard and it's, that was part of the administrative code. Mm. Can somebody look it's a, a long-winded answer to say we have to get back to you. Can you check with Jean, Kevin, or? I can call her right now if you'd like. No, no, not right now. <laughs> it's 8 o'clock in the evening. <laughs> she calls me at 8 o'clock. Hey, Max. we just bit. giving as good as he gets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, I'll leave that up to you then. Um, yes, yeah, I, I will report back on that. OK. Yeah, I think it's worth leaving out on the agenda in case there's something that we can and should be influencing. But yep. if the answer is that there's not, then it can come off, I think. Yeah. Yep. Okay with me. All right. Three, three ordinance. I have nothing to report. Peppertown Park. Kim? Nothing to report. We haven't had a meeting. Okay. Recycling. Uh, it's just there to, in case there's something to report. Uh, I guess. Uh, we, we are waiting to have our next meeting with, um, we were supposed to have it on Thursday, but we're looking to have the next meeting with the Youth Council, um, hopefully sometime this week, uh, if, if they're available, uh, just to talk about the initiatives that we can work with them on uh, in ahead of Earth Day, Arbor Day, et cetera. Okay. Um... Topics for the Township Newsletter. John had proposed a topic. I did a slight revision on that, sent it back to John and Angus. Uh, yeah, I have that. Uh, I'm gonna be submitting it on the, the, uh, the, the, their new submission form shortly. It is similar since we did one in November, obviously when we did the, when we were telling people not to fertilize. So right. um, this is, I guess the update to uh, that they can fertilize and how, right? Yep. So uh, are there I, any other topics we want to introduce? I have a recommendation. We, we probably can break down the recommendations we make on um, the plans we review. And though the, the, the people who they, they are actually are meaningful for are a small group, we don't have any guidance when we recommend impervious pavers, uh, uh, pervious pavers, uh, uh, native shrubs. Uh, we, we can kind of make a a topic line that says, what do these recommendations mean? Familiarize the township with these recommendations when we put them out there. Because we, you guys discussed that earlier. I think uh, David brought up the idea that, we, you know, they specifically don't know what to say. So we can kind of break it down about what the Environmental Commission recommendations mean. Oh, for things like pervious papers. What, does, what are pervious papers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and and explain the process, how why they why they're important, how we make the recommendations. Explain the process of what we're doing. That kind of dovetail into that. All related to stormwater, right? Yeah. Well, the next deadline is the deadline is in two days. So <laughs> we can <laughs> do we want to have something for this deadline, or do we want to have it for for the April one? Yeah, let's do for April because we're. I'm, I'm working without a computer at this point. <laughs> I could write that up whenever you guys want it, but just not in two days. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 aim for April. Okay. 
Passaic River Park. Uh, we had a meeting with Dan Brunier and Betty Ann Kelly, we, meaning uh, David Harris, John Leo, and myself, uh, for about an hour last week. I thought it was a fairly good meeting. Uh, either David or John, you want to comment? Definitely a good meeting. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're definitely um, aligned with what we would like to do in terms of getting a footpath through that piece of Passaic Park. Um, and I also thought we made progress towards figuring out what the next steps will be to to make this happen. So, um, yeah, good meeting. Um, do you want to take it from there, John? Um, there's a lot of movement on it. Yeah, the, um, I have some maps we can pass around. We kind of did a walk and mapped it out. And um, I think we're just looking at a couple of bridges that uh, obviously were a bigger hurdle. Uh, Dave, did, did, you, did you want to talk about like what we were thinking about plan-wise? I mean, there's a lot of details here, but uh, we, we seem to have a lot of interested parties. I did email the Passaic River Coalition and they were pretty excited to see that there's some movement too. And they said, uh, here's a couple of resources. Here's a couple of uh, grant avenues. And I was talking to Mira Rao about um, identifying up to four uh, possible grants and sending them her way. So her team, can, the grants committee can start to look at helping us when, when we do need grants and identify exactly what it is we have to pay for. And, and keep in mind, as far as grants are concerned, if we currently have a grant with an organization, we may not be allowed to apply for a second grant in the same year, if you will. So you gotta be aware of that. So we do have a grant running with Handcheck, for example, so um, at the moment, uh, we would not uh, uh, be allowed to apply for a second grant with Andrek. We could do it next year, but uh, once, once this grant is completed. Not so this is something I can discuss with Mira as to be very specific, because I think we'll need multiple grants. Correct. Us. Yep. Yeah, so it's a bit, it's a bit sort of chicken and egg in that um, in order to apply for grant funding, we we need to have some idea as to what it's going to cost. Um, and there's some work that needs to go into assessing what it's going to cost. Yes, so yes. Um, that's, and, and so that's the sort of, we made some progress towards breaking down that chicken and egg cycle in the last meeting. Yep. I'm going to share my screen for just a moment. Um, uh, can I share my screen, Richard? Uh, um, your host is disabled screen sharing. Oh, let me let me hold on. Let me. Uh, okay. All right. You host. Yeah, I'm hosting. Hey, Tom. And you oh, hey, David. Tom, we spoke with Mary. Did she share with you that she's pursuing an ARP grant for the for the trail signage? Okay. That's what I'm meeting with her tomorrow on, and uh, I want her to make sure she understands the scope of the whole trails thing because she's looking to produce signs for the trails. Right. So this is the, um, the GIS map of the, of the area in question. Um, so down in the bottom corner here is um, Berkeley Caterers, so the defunct catering business. This is Mount Carmel Field. Um, so th this, this area is open. And then from <laughs> this point on the map, it becomes wooded. And so the area that John and I explored on Sunday morning was this stretch, this wooded stretch all the way along the Passaic to the, um, I'm not sure it is a super fun site, but the, um, yeah. Yeah. Chevron is. Yeah, the, the EPA reclamation site. Oh, it's over here somewhere. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's an awesome piece of riverfront. There's two problems in that there's a stream here that comes down from um, the, the rear of the properties on Garfield Street, and there's a stream over here that does the same thing. Again, yeah. drops down from the back of the properties on Garfield Street. And this is the GIS map, so this, this indicates that these are tributary, tributaries of the Passaic, and so all of the rules around riparian zones apply to those. 
Um, so the needs for um, permitting as, a, as applicable uh, for any, any bridges that cross those streams. Um, and so we would need to engineer a way across this first stream and the second stream in order to make it a continuous trail. And so that was the response we wanted to get back to um, Dan and Betty Ann at the county to identify what the scope of the bridge work was that was needed. There were some other minor bridges along this stretch that have or minor streams that have been bridged already with sort of 10 and 12 foot long bridges. Um, but these two streams marked on this map are more significant and the, the bridges to cross those streams are more than just the Boy Scout project. It's it's um it's some real engineering. They're sort of 30 foot, 20 to 30 foot spans. And so we will need to have the conversation now with Dan and Betty Ann about um, what's the next step towards getting those designed, what would that cost, and then that may be an input into a grant application to, to get the funding to do that. Hey, uh, David, if you check your email, I've got the, uh, the street map and then the, the walk that we did, or I can share my screen if anybody else is interested. Yeah, you can go ahead and share your screen, John. All right. Okay. Angus, how do I do it? Are you on a mobile device? Tablet, yeah. All right, I can um, I can pull it up if you like. Yeah. I just sent um, it to you recently. I had it a short while ago. There you go. So you can see by the orange line, that's about where we had trouble. And Dave and I had the goal of sticking as close to the Passaic as we could. And um, that's where some flooding out problems were. And that was recorded later on since we entered over more towards Berkeley caterers. Well, that whole area uh, behind um, Garfield Street, that's all the wetlands. Oh, yeah. We noticed. Yes. Yep. So we were trying to see how realistic it was, and it was about a foot to two feet uh, high above the season. It, it wasn't, we see that there were higher flooding spots, but this was moderate, I'd say. And that's about where that trail was. We consider that maybe the wet season trail. Yeah, and this then, whole area, after you cross the first stream, which when we had to actually loop onto the, onto Garfield Street to, av to avoid the first stream, there's no way crossing it. Um, this whole area is pretty extensively um, flooded during the winter months, certainly. Um, and so we had to loop around some of these um, pools that were well into the woods, well back from the river, in order to get back to the riverfront. There's a, and then there's, there's this fairly dry stretch of riverfront, and then we had to loop fairly far inland to cross the second stream, which we could cross by crossing a, a down tree. It was crossable, um, but that doesn't make for a hiking trail necessarily. Um, so yeah. Um, and then you, could, you did not continue then uh, out Grand Street, out to Snyder? Well, ignore the fact that, um, that the trace from John's phone apparently shows us crossing through the Superfund site. We'll, we'll not mention that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, there's, um, there's, a, there's a way back up here to Grant Street, um, but in fact, th this area where my mouse is, is the, um, is the EPA site. There's county okay. property behind that, I think, that could, could, um, could take a continuation of the trail. That's so it would, certainly, it would certainly be feasible to continue the trail back behind that site and out onto um, what's, what's okay. the northwest, north-south street. Summit? Yeah, to summit. 
But there's also Greenwich Street continues there, you can see, behind, it's kind of south of the, you either go back north to the, to the river and walk along the edge of the river, uh, north of the uh, water uh, works, or you come up and there might be a way to continue on. Grand Street becomes unpaved at that point to the right of where your final marker is. Yeah, going to the right that way, that, that becomes unpaved. And there might be a way to go onto county property there because just north of Grant Street, that's county property. Okay, but I think this point here is where the, um, there's a couple of buildings, the, uh, some, some industrial buildings. And the path Correct. continues along the river there to um, past the water treatment plant, hits Snyder and then continues towards the, the soccer fields. Correct. So this is the bit we wanted to connect to, the bit that goes all the way to the soccer fields. And so, um, so yeah. Um, so the next step is we've got a, we've scheduled another call with Dan and um, Betty Ann in a couple of weeks. Um, John and I are still in the process of writing up what we um, learned at the weekend. Um, and then the next step will be discussing what we need to do to, in terms of what will be the next steps in terms of planning for um, how we could bridge these streams and also how much could we do in terms of just laying out the trails that connect the bridges in the interim and then allowing the bridges to, to follow to some extent. I also tried to contact uh, Dean Talcott who did this environmental steward project, but I haven't heard back from him. So. Right. I hear back from the election. And there is a tremendous amount of trash in that, in these woods. Yep. Many oh, dumpsters okay. worth of trash. Old okay. snowmobile for one. There's a snowmobile in that. Yeah. What? Yep. Yeah. Just well to add to that, just to emphasize that, the other year, not 2020, but in 2019, um, we cleaned up, and actually Angus was there. I can't recall who else from the Environmental Commission was there, but we did a big cleanup with just that small stretch from Summit yeah. Avenue going towards Snyder. And we cleaned up like several thousand pounds of stuff, like giant tires and yeah. you name it. And it was there. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there are, there are, are sort of six foot truck tires in there. There's a snowmobile in there. Um, I think this will be a township wide um, project when it comes to the cleanup. Yeah, we did it, David, just so you know, we, we it was um, Sustainable Berkeley Heights did it in partnership with the county. So the county came with a, a bunch of grabbers, et cetera, right. and we, we made a huge pile, and then the county was responsible for coming and taking it and hauling it all away. Okay, so, yeah, I, I, I can see how that would work. We pick a few trailheads to pull the stuff out to, and then the county or the town can take it away. County, I guess. So yeah, sure. for, some, for something like that, we'd probably have to wait, obviously, until uh, restriction, you know, more vaccinations when it's a lot safer to do oh, so. I, 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 th I think we're a ways away from that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think one of the ideas we had was that we would go in and make, make the cleaning opportunity the opportunity to clear out some trails and, and lay them out just naturally with uh, downed branches. And uh, the bridges would basically be in process in the permitting phases all at the same time to come later. But, but there are opportunities to lay in some of the trails now, mm -hmm. um, even without the bridges in place. And so I think, I think that's something we could legitimately do. So I think that's part of the conversation with the county to figure out, can we put some, is it okay if we put some trails in? And we can actually <laughs> use those as a way of hauling out some of the, um, the trash. Yeah, the, the way I saw this section was two loops uh, where you have the trailheads come off the streets, you loop down to the river and you come back on another street. And that way you never cross a bridge. And eventually when the bridges do come to fruition, the, the, the circles would connect at the bridges and you would have a kind of a complete structure in this seg section. And then we can carry on towards New Providence in the future. Yep. Yeah, this, this, this whole section, th this is not a complete loop right now. You can't get from Grant Street um, 
which is this bit here, down to the river, or you can, you can do that bit along the river, but it, it doesn't come back up to Garfield. So we could okay. do that though, without crossing a river. Yeah, so we could do this in between the tributaries, right? Yep. So stay dry. question on, on those trails themselves, I don't, I don't, maybe this was brought up, I'm not sure. Um, is there a way to lay out the trail in a way, I guess, to um, encourage water to not pool in a certain area, to, to kind of run off to the sides, to kind of, you know? No. no? Because we don't want to mess with, uh, we don't want to move water. So we want to lay it out in the driest, highest possible place. Hmm. And you're really not moving any, we're not moving any dirt. Yeah. When we right. say building a trail, we would simply pick a route through the brush, clear the minimum amount of brush, and sort of put down branches left and right just so it indicates where you need to walk. Okay. okay. No, no moving of, no, no leveling of trail, no grading. Oh, okay. They're not allowed to remove trees either, I think. And, but you can put blazes on the trees to mark, okay, there's right. the way you're going. There's lots of pricker bushes. Those need to be. Um, yeah. Pricker bushes, uh, define pricker bushes for me. <laughs> no, that's as technical as I get. Sorry. It's technical. Um, they look that's like some sort of invasive um, vine. They're not blackberries. They're not. They're not blackberries. They're. They're something. They're that looks invasive to me. Either multiflora rose or Japanese barberry. They weren't barberry. I'm not sure they're multiflora rose. No, they, they could have been the rose. Okay. That's a tougher uh, plant to get rid of, but uh, with patience, you can do it. Is there any point on that uh, river that, that that it might make sense to cross the river and go on to the other side? Because there's so many places that, just looking at a satellite map here, that you really run out of room, especially that yeah. side. The, the other side is massive. The other side of the river, Alvaro, is is truly a, a wet, even wetter wetland. Oh, it's worse. Okay. Uh, and of course, it's in a different county. So then you're talking about how do you, you know, how do you operate with that because you're crossing the river? Does that mean you'd have a bridge across the river or a crossing? Right. Well, um, unless we can coordinate with the. Um... Is, is it Chatham? Menor? Yes. No, not Menor. Um, I think it's Chatham. Chatham Borough. So we, you can, just off the map to the right is, is the Snyder Avenue Bridge. You can cross there. And then to yeah, the other end of the map is um, the Springfield Avenue Bridge. So um, those are the river crossings. There's no reason why there couldn't be a trail on the other side. But it's not our that, that would be phase area. three, I think. Yeah, well, that's another thing to know our bailiwick and uh, it's oh, yeah. a bigger area than our side. It's also, it's Morris County, right? Morris County, yes. Yep. But as far as I know, there's nothing in there. Seems pretty wild. All right. I think the thought was if we lost the ability to stay along the river, we would come in probably as far as we had to, probably back to a road. Um, the challenge with that is, is you can't get too close to the houses because then you might have an outcry with that. So you stay along, the, the first goal was to stay along the river as much as possible. And then as high as possible was the second goal. If you couldn't achieve either without getting too close to the houses, we would come into a road. Yeah. But this area that here that's all, that's largely wetland, at least in the winter, we'd need to skirt pretty far inland to um, just to get around that. Whether, whether there's a summer trail along the river it just remains to be seen. So that will that will learn later in the season. All right, thank you, John yep. and David. Ready to go on to the next topic? Yeah. Yep. Um, Trex collection, Kim. Um, 
so we are now at the um, 16,600 plus mark uh, of thin film plastics collected. Um, just yesterday, Pat Smith sent me pictures of our last round of engraved benches. Um, to date, as a township, we have earned 20 benches collectively. Um, and Pat will be bringing this last hall, this most recent hall of benches, um, down to Lower Columbia Park, weather permitting by the end of this week. Um, if you bear with me, I can tell you which benches these were. Give me just a second here. Okay. So, um, Sustainable Berkeley Heights, Taylor Rental, Smith Chiropractic, Berkeley Heights Township Council, and Berkeley Heights Township and Scout Pack 268 for their second bench. Those were the sets of benches that are done now that will be going down into Lower Columbia Park. Okay. And no update on changes in where you can drop things off. It's still the same. Yeah, we, we have not had any issue, which thank goodness we have not because right now we're really floating under the radar right now. Um, most corporate headquarters say all of their stores are not collecting and that is it. So we're very, very fortunate that the manager at Madison at the location that we're using is accepting our thin film plastics. Um, I was told by Taylor Rental that they had the Rotary Club of Hoboken call over to them to see if they could deposit their thin film plastics at Taylor Rental. And I had to reach back out to them and let them know that um, Taylor Rental is not a Trex partner store could they possibly try to find another store that's a, a little bit closer to them? I notified them of um, Home Depot's, um, particularly the one at Vauxhall that's willing to collect in small amounts as are most Home Depot's, but you just can't drop off in bulk. That seemed to satisfy them. Um, and that's kind of it. Um, I, I was told during this last week there were two churches and a big hall from Mary K. McMillan um, that they, I guess they came in a caravan. I'm not sure what went, went down, but there was about 500 pounds that was dropped off at Taylor Rental this week. So right. Taylor Rental is doing a, a fantastic job managing the process and um, working things out with our drop-off point. Okay, thanks so much. Stormwater Management Education Campaign, John. Um, trying to think what the update is on that one. We uh, have the Communications Committee developing some content for us, but they, uh, I don't know if they're ready to, to take the program and roll with it. So I think we, we might just have a way to start rolling this out in a different fashion. So I really have no updates on this right now. David and I had uh, reviewed the document you, you wrote. Uh, did you get a chance to take a look at that? I did, and yeah, your um, your comments are correct. I'm going to make some adjustments so it's a little bit easier to manage. And I actually did a couple of things. I already took some stuff out that was a little much, and then started taking some comms content and putting it in there. So the end of the article is the end of the document. It has has the actual articles in it that they could just post out. So they have, all I have to do is add graphics. Um. Yeah, and Liza hasn't really told me that they're asking for anything more for now. Uh, what we're doing is satisfying them. Uh, nothing else. Okay. And on the HUP meeting, I just uh, have it in there. The date is next month. Is that right, Kim? That's correct. Okay. Chemtrade, I have no update on Chemtrade. Deforestation at Governor Livingston, no update. Lower Columbia Park. Uh, that's uh, the Rook Department project. Any update there? Uh, no, no update yet from Carolyn. Um, you know, they 
they'll do it when they're able to do it when it's not as muddy since the snow just melted. <laughs> um, I'll follow up with Carolyn and see what the plan is because I know we have to meet certain milestones and certain targets, but in any event, make sure that it's done by the, the June deadline that the project has to be completed by. So just to make sure everything's moving along. Okay. Leaf blower noise. I'm sorry, Richard. I, I was having trouble getting off mute. Um, the, what is the date of the hub meeting? Just so I can capture it for the minutes. Um, sorry, Renee, give me just a second. It's Wednesday, April 7th at 7.30. Okay, thanks, Kim. Thanks. Now, now we're moving to leaf blower noise, Kim. Um, yeah, um, lowest circulated, um, Lowest circulated uh, some minutes that will be posted in the hub. Um, and there's another woman that circulated a leaf blower newsletter that will also be posted in the hub. Okay, that's it then. Is it, Kim? Yeah, that, that was it because I, I did not attend most of that meeting last time because it conflicts with when the Environmental Commission meets. Okay, moving on to trail map grant. I think that got covered somewhat with Alvaro, but maybe there's some other update here. We didn't get the grant. Did not get the grant, okay. No, that's why Mira's gonna work again on it. Yeah. Should I take that off for now or are we keeping that? You could change it to the AARP uh, grant. Oh, then it's a, okay, it's a, still a grant. Trail yeah. map, but it's a trail map. She's going to take the same content and transfer it over to the new grant application. Okay, then I'll leave it. Okay. LED bulb giveaway, Renee. Um, so there is no update on this. We're still waiting to get a date when the LED bulbs and quantity will be delivered to us. Um, I was asked a, a couple of questions um, in terms of who will be distributing these and how. So um, that's as much of an update as I have for today. Okay. Then on to New Jersey Tree Recovery Campaign. Um, Alvaro had did you do that last time, or is there any update, Alvaro, on the seedlings? I shared with you that um, we're, we're likely to fall short of our request of a thousand. It'll they, they, you'll have to pay at a rate of eighty cents a piece, multiples of twenty five. So I'll figure twenty bucks for groups of twenty five, as many as we want to pursue. So I guess the question is, do do we want to? Uh, we don't have a number yet as to how many we're will receive, but we want to agree that, can I let, um, I don't remember this guy's name, it, Alec, uh, know that uh, we will purchase trees up to the full thousand? Right, I, um, I, I would normally would order seedlings for the fourth grade. So I have not done that at this point and I pay for those seedlings. Uh, not I personally, but the tree trust fund does. So we have a tree trust fund that's used to buy trees and also used to buy seedlings. I think at 80 cents a seedling, that's not a, an exorbitant price if we bought, you know, a couple of hundred seedlings. I don't see that as a problem. I'll let out. Alvaro, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said I'd like. I'll let Alec know that that's we're ready, prepared to purchase up to 200. 
All right, yeah, Let, let's see what he says. Okay. My 200 is the whole thing, so. Well, no, I mean, he's, he's saying we, uh, if I'm understanding Alvaro correctly, we would get a certain number of seedlings without charge. Right. We, don't, we don't know how many that will be. Could it be 500? Who knows? That's the question. He, he's just starting to see how the seedlings are faring uh, in the ground. So let's see what happens. Understood. OK, thanks. Uh, direct install, that was uh, a program that also involved sustainable accuracy. Uh, I did not move forward with this. I may take this back uh, off the uh, agenda because we had done it about 10 years ago as, and uh, we received an email from a company that does this uh, and basically uh, if I'm recalling correctly, it's really very little cost to do a survey of buildings. Uh, and then the, uh, if they're saving money, they would be uh, basically paying for the savings. So let me go uh, take that off and I will review that from sustainable Jersey aspect as well. Drafting recommendations for plans. Darn if I'm remembering what this is. That's your, oh, your um, success is, role, right? This is, I'm sorry, this has to do with co chairs. Um, I'm sorry, David, you said something. No, that was, that was you got it. Yeah, this has to do with co chairs. So um, let, let's hold off on that and uh, go to CFMP core training. And I think, David, you had signed up for it. Yeah, that started um, today, actually. Okay. So it's an online course with a couple of um, in-person uh, online Zoom sessions, Zoom or equivalent. Um, okay. So yeah. It, it went OK? No glitches or anything? What do you say? It was, was it successful in the sense that you were able to connect and do, do the course? Um, yeah, I'm connected. I've I've got the account. Um, I'm registered. Um, I need to do several hours of um, online modules, and then there's some um, an in-person session, and then there's some more modules next week, and another in-person session the week after. Okay. It runs through the end of March. Terrific. It's about it's about six or eight hours of content, I think, or eight hours or more. Yeah. Again, thank you. Well, Thank you for doing this. Th thanks for stepping up. Um, okay, so co-chairs. Um, two people stepped up uh, to co-chair the commission, uh, Angus Chen and Kim Diamond. Uh, we had a conversation where basically we went over the priorities for the commission, as well as trying to um, phase the chairs in. And it happened that uh, my computer died. So uh, I asked Angus to co-host this meeting. Uh, but th that's part of what would happen going forward. Uh, and the other aspect of being a co-chair would be to draft recommendations for plans. Um, and I offered to you know, take people through that step-by-step -step to show how that uh, uh, that recommendation is developed. So we will do that going forward um, and not uh, expect that you're all of a sudden going to have to do everything and, uh, and I'll just leave you to uh, uh, try to manage on your own. This is uh, something we were trying to uh, help uh, keep the commission moving forward as a, as a team. Uh, anybody want to make any comments on that? Well, I, um, one thing we discussed in that meeting between the three of us was, uh, I guess, in terms of how the process uh, of evaluating these plans are in terms of, you know, uh, of, um, you know, grading and things like that, all the different maps. So 
I'm looking into trying to see if there's a storage drive. Right now we have a Google Drive that we're using uh, from the Berkeley Heights Gmail account that used to be in existence way back in, in the day. And I, that will be our starting point unless we can find something more formal with the township to store these various maps we can use to really well evaluate, you know, beyond just the maps that the um, applicant provides. Uh, so, you know, to really kind of give a, a better assessment, you know. Yes. So then we'll share that as soon as, you know, we have something in place. Great. Uh, Richard, I, I just want to, uh, to I, I'm just going to read this out loud because Tom very uh, nicely has suggested this in, in the chat. Um, if you, if you're able to put together a tip sheet for myself and Angus and for, frankly, if it could be something that we can circulate to the group um, so that everyone knows what to look for when evaluating a plan that that would be helpful so that it's just not a an oral talk through with myself and angus but it's something physical that we can use as a reference document there and there, in fact there is a an antrec uh, guide and i will uh, send that around so you can uh, follow that as well So Richard, yeah. it's Renee. Um, you were breaking up for me when you started to discuss the topic. Um, can you just clarify again? So um, Kim and Angus volunteer to act as co-chair. So what does that mean for this year or next year? So basically going through some training uh, to uh, take over as co-chairs, uh, dividing up responsibility. We haven't discussed in detail who would do what, but I think that it would be a matter of sharing responsibilities uh, as we move forward and so that no one person is overwhelmed with what things, uh, how things go. And uh, one of the responsibilities would be drafting recommendations for plans and I offered to go through doing how I do that. And as Kim just said, uh, providing a, a tip sheet for how that process works. Thank you. Richard, could, could you possibly just clarify the, I guess the appointment date for myself and Angus? Uh, I mean, is it, something that's going to happen now so that um, it's just kind of cross-training among the three of us together, or is, this, is the baton going to pass at the end of this calendar year, just so that everyone's clear? I would, I, I'm hoping that you are both willing to phase in starting now. I mean, I'm not expecting you to take on total responsibility immediately, but start moving into uh, taking response, you know, taking on some responsibilities as a chair, as a co-chair. Okay, all right. So, so then my follow-up question is: Is Angie going to appoint myself and Angus to be co-chairs shortly? Then I, I don't know that Ang Angie needs to do that. I, Alvaro, I would defer to you on that. Um, I, I don't know that she has to formally do that. Yeah, because your term is, you're still terming through the end of the year, right? Correct. Um, let me, uh, I can reach out to her just to confirm. Okay. I think that we as the commission can decide internally that we would have co-chairs, but uh, it doesn't hurt to uh, check with Angie if she has uh, any comments on this. Yeah, I mean, if it's just a matter of, of all I care about is like following the appropriate procedure yep. so that, you know, we're, we're doing everything by the book. Hey guys, your, your forming ordinance tells you the answer to that question or the sentence. The mayor shall designate one of the members to serve as chairperson or presiding officer of the commission. So 
So going on to adopt the drain, that would be Kim. Um, so we received the GIS data from Tom Solfero. He has passed it along to myself and to um, the people at adopt a drain um, So they have the information. Um, I was told that um, the, by the person who is uploading our information onto their system so that we can be part of that network that um, she had expected it to be done um, by today. I haven't heard back from her yet, but um, she is in the process of mapping all of our drains so that we will be online and up to speed. Um, the, the head of the whole entire program um, at Hamline University said that um, they are so highly interested in bringing more towns like ours online from the East Coast because right now Westfield is the only town that is online on the East Coast that he's willing to help us get up and running and launch this with us even if we don't have funding at this time to pay. Um, that said, I think I might have gone over this last time, but um, I'll restate it again. Um, membership for the, the 2021 calendar year is approximately $700. Um, and the one-time setup fee was estimated at being about $500. It could range between $200 and $800. So really we're talking about max $1,400, which should be covered by a grant if we get it. We said last time that we would apply to Sustainable Jersey to try to get such a grant. Um, I am currently waiting for the um, head of this program to write back to me or give me some kind of physical thing <laughs> that we can submit because right now it's, it's just I I have sent to him the price quotations that he has given me. Um, someone else from Adopt a Drain has basically sent the same numbers to him, but in order to apply for a grant or to meet with Angie and Liza, it would be really nice to have some hard numbers from Hamline University slash Adopt a Drain slash the um, Center for Global Environmental Education to have those numbers in hand from them. So it's not just us saying, these are the numbers that we discussed, right? Um, and that's where we are. Um, Kevin and I did not get a chance to meet with Liza or Angie yet, um, but that that is in the works. Um, and again, it will be very helpful to have the actual quotations in hand so we can say, look, all we need is X amount, pay for this, and then we'll be set. Okay, any other comments? Moving on to citizens hearings on any environmental issues. Do we have any citizens still listening, attending? Yep, I'm here. Um, okay. Hey, I wanna, first I wanna thank you for uh, moving up the, uh, the building infrastructure thing. I had some potential constraints, so I appreciated that, that and, and I was able to, you'll stick around, but I appreciate you doing that anyway, especially if this went beyond nine, I got a sip. Um, and I just want to confirm, did you, um, like that again, yeah, you, did, you did hear what I was saying about uh, referencing section 2.88070, appointments, terms, vacancies of your ordinance that created the Environmental Commission and that the mayor, uh, I'll designate one of the regular members to serve as chairperson or presiding officer. So. Those are the only sentence in your ordinance that talks to that issue. So you can take sure. a action. And then this, the other question I had also related to, I recall early on there was an agenda item for the annual report. Um, I know that was at the beginning of the year and I'm looking for the reference. It says, um, do you know when that is coming out? And what is coming out? Uh, it was a report of prior activities. 
you lost me. I'm sorry, Steve. The prior oh, okay. your 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 ordinance, and maybe I'm confusing it with another another thing listed early on um, in an early of the year agenda. Um, it says the environmental commission shall make a report of its prior year activities to the council, not later than January 15th of each year. Um, annual, yeah, annual report. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, it's published. Okay, and where is that on the the township, the EC section of the township website, or? I, I can't promise, but I think we did do that. I would have to defer to Angus to see whether it was uploaded. Uh, I don't have it yet. Let me check, hold on. Should be under Environmental Commission, and there should be something about annual reports on the website. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, it will be. It's not up there now, but it will be there shortly. Okay. Great. I'm glad I asked to, to close the loop on that. Hey, and just while, while website, do you still? It's still up, but I don't know that you're still using it. The EC, the BC ec.com website that you had at one time, that's just one page. Is that is that kind and of- bh-ec.org website yeah. uh, is defunct. We no longer, we no longer own that domain. Um, apparently someone bought that domain, at least that's the way it appears because it has some of our old, very old content. Yeah, so- Yeah, that's all it has. So it doesn't- Yeah, it, yeah, but we don't, we have no jurisdiction over it. We actually have no- um, Right, that can- We didn't it. renew it after, we only renewed it for the year during the transition. To, to the township website, so. That answers my question. Thank you, I'm all set. Okay, Any, uh, the only other thing I have and I forgot to put on the agenda was radon. There was a radon program. Uh, the, I thought that um, the, we had applied for and that communications was going to do something about. Does anybody recall that? I remember it. I don't remember what we were doing at the time. I'd have to look it up. I will. Okay. So then I'll go back. I thought that we had uh, applied for it and uh, or asked uh, that the communications committee do the program. So I'm not sure where we are on that. So I will uh, follow up with the communications just to see if that's really what happened. Otherwise, I have nothing more. Um, just want to revisit two topics. Uh, John, um, the they made a change to the uh, newsletter. Um, the text, the, it's, it's a little bit more rigid than it was before. There's a 300 character limit. So I tried even just using the first few lines and I, I kept running out of lines. So I'll work with you, John. Maybe we can just shrink it just a little bit. I mean, we can put everything in the link, you know, afterwards. I just want to kind of still send enough information. So we'll talk later. And, right, um, and then the other thing I, I should have brought up during recycling is um, I found out recently, and this is really not in our town, but um, it's been it's being shared in our different forums is uh, you, the UPS store in Summit is actually doing a charitable program for Summit, uh, I forgot what the name of the organization, Summit Giving or something. Um, we'll have to look up, I'll, I'll have to look at the name. Um, but they are, the UPS store there is taking number five uh, takeout containers. Um, so, you know, and they're encouraging people to, it's, it's actually a partnership with their environmental commission uh, and they're taking it to do to basically package meals. So that's like the pint quart soup containers, as well as you know your your average entree containers that restaurants uh, distribute when they do takeout. So they're doing that to collect them for you know kind of a meal packaging, uh, a charitable meal packaging uh, effort. So I encourage everyone to participate if 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 they happen to be having a lot of number five plastics. That's the USPS store across from the rail, railroad station, is it? Yes, yes, it is. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and the and the owner, I guess, or, or somebody there, is heavily involved with uh, environmental commission affairs and and their team. So 
I wish we had a store like that here, but we don't. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. No problem. All right, anybody else? If not, do we hear a motion to adjourn? Uh, motion to adjourn, 9, 11 p.m. Second. Okay, right. any of you? All right. Thanks everyone for attending. I, I really feel constrained with a cell phone, I must say. I'm looking forward to getting my computer working again. <laughs> and everyone have a good week. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.